What's up everyone, Mr. Scanlon here, and in this video we're going to be just starting you out in Adobe After Effects on your uh, special effects path. Now, if you guys remember from last year, uh, a lot of guys had a lot of success with After Effects and they did a lot of cool uh, special effects videos. Um, you know, just to name a couple guys like Joe McGrath, uh, Bryce Hodges, um, Kevin Rivera, they did some amazing stuff in After Effects, and a lot of other guys did some incredible stuff too. Um, you can obviously see their highlights online. Uh, just so you know, After Effects is a professional application. Um, anyone in the real movie industry making the big blockbuster films are going to be using After Effects as well as some other 3D software to make all the movies. It's the most premier uh, program you can have to develop special effects, which are and they're, they're always going to be very real and genuine special effects and nothing ever like you know, cheesy or something like that, unless you kind of make it that way. Um, in this tutorial series, I'm going to be trying to just get you up to the basics of how to use After Effects, how to kind of manipulate things around, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, videocopilot.net and some of the videos on that website, uh, because that website is run by a guy named Andrew Kramer, who is a uh, professional special effects artist. Um, he's worked on movies like Star Trek and Star Wars, uh, as well as many others, and he has some of the best tutorials I've seen out there. Um, in fact, that's how I learned how to use After Effects uh, about six years ago, six or seven years ago. All right, so it doesn't matter if you're using a Mac or Windows. I know if you guys are um, using Mount Carmel's computers, they're going to be Macs, and they're going to have After Effects on there. Uh, it doesn't matter. After Effects is a very compatible program for both systems. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you're using, you'll be able to follow along with these videos just fine. Uh, everything is, some, some things might be slightly out of place, but it's not a big deal at all. I'll go over where to find everything in these first few videos here. And it might look a little scary kind of looking around right now, because there's a lot of different buttons everywhere. But don't worry, we're going to go over which ones are really, you know, really useful, stuff that you'll use a lot, and then other things that you, know, you might never really use. All right, um, so to start out, when you first open up After Effects, you're going to get something like that looks like this. You know, uh, just don't worry if stuff is a little bit more compact over here, something like that. But you should have maybe like a bottom here with, that says Render Queue, and definitely have a composition in the middle. And then you want something like a project folder right here. So the first thing you want to do when you open up After Effects is not actually go to File, but you want to go to Composition and then New Composition. Okay, so. This panel here is going to open up. Um, you don't have to name it anything different. I usually just keep it as whatever's the, the default. Um, don't worry about the preset or anything. The two things that you're really going to be usually concerned about in here is the width and height. Um, standard HD videos are going to be 1280 by 720 uh, pixels. Okay, So the height 720, width 1280. That's a 16 by 9 ratio. That's a typical widescreen high definition video that you might see on YouTube or something like that. If you really wanted to, you could bump this up to 10, uh, 1080 pixels, so 1080 HD, which is obviously going to be more crisp, but usually you don't want to do that because uh, the computer um, memory can't really hold uh, all of that uh, when you're trying to render it out. That's very expensive on the computer and it might make your render times too long, like maybe an hour or something like that for a 30 second video. So I usually just like to stick with 1280 by 720. And if you want to lock the aspect ratio and like go down to maybe 480 or something like that, or you know, maybe you want to go up to 1080, you can do that. But like I said, we're just going to stick with that 720. So I just started it up. I just hit enter. Um, you don't have to worry about the rest of the settings there. They're pretty much going to be always standard. Um, I left like two minutes on my timeline down here, which might be a little long. It doesn't matter what you have, like I said. We're going to be mostly uh, sticking with non-video um, stuff for the first few tutorials anyways, just to get you started off. So it doesn't matter what your timeline is. All right, so just to get you kind of going with the surroundings here. Um, really, you know, the toolbar is going to be pretty much the same in any program. I usually don't use like any of these. I don't even use this effects panel much just because I have this one over here which is much nicer because you can search for things. <coughs> um, the layer box is somewhat important mostly because this new panel uh, composition only when you're making new compositions or when you're actually going to render the video. Those of you who don't know rendering a video is basically taking what you have here and turning it into a file so that way you can upload it to YouTube or just play it on your computer and share it or whatever. 
All right, so um, this is the project uh, container right here. This basically holds all of the assets in your project. Uh, right now we just have our composition in there because that's the only thing we just created. Um, and then right up here next to it is the effects panel, which there's nothing in there right now because we haven't added any effects to uh, our composition or anything yet. And we'll get into that very, very shortly. Just a quick note, some of you might be looking at like the middle of the screen here, which is the composition window, and you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I don't see all these like you know these square things. Am I doing something wrong? No, this button down here is a, a, a transparency grid toggle. So if I toggle that, it turns black, probably just like yours. Um, basically, you want it to you know typically be black like this at the beginning. Um, basically, all this transparency thing means is that if you have it on and you're rendering, um, you know like a video file or something like that, a high quality video file, it's gonna make it so that way if you took that video and overlaid it to something else, it's gonna it's gonna be transparent in the background. That's all it's letting you know. Um, I'm just gonna leave it with black just so we have like a nice solid black background right now. Um, all of these buttons at the bottom of the composition tab I typically never use. You'll notice if you start scrolling in or scrolling out, you can kinda of get way too far or way too fast in. Sometimes I know I remember from last year, guys would get really get lost with this. I don't know why, because it's pretty simple. You just zoom back out, and you're good. But if you do, uh, just know that oh, not that one. Um, you can go over to this percentage thing here and and play around with it. Uh, you know, if you wanted to zoom in a little bit more, you can go up to like 100% of the screen, or you could go to like 33 if you wanted to zoom out. I usually stick around like 50 or something like that. It usually depends on the composition size too. So. Whatever uh, works for you, but definitely like, you know, if you're zooming in or something like that to get the finer detail on something, just know that it's just the scrolling wheel or play with this. Um, I never use really any of these buttons down here, so don't be afraid of them. Um, sometimes I'll use this one right here. Uh, if I set it to quarter, it basically just means that um, what I have inside of here will run faster on my computer temporarily, so that way I don't have to worry about um, the quality slowing down the video too much when I'm trying to work on it. But we'll definitely talk about that later because it's uh, you'll 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 notice that you need it. I'll just leave it at full for now. Um, the active camera. This is a 3D setting. We don't have to worry about that right now because we're not going to be talking about 3D for at least a couple videos. And then I usually never touch this view setting either. So pretty much most of the the buttons on here are useless except for maybe this guy, this guy, and this guy right here. All right. So that's pretty much it for the composition panel. Um, not a whole lot to worry about it. Um, just know that if you accidentally ever like click out of this or something and it looks like this and you're panicking like, oh no, where did it go? You can just double click on the composition in your project folder and it'll pop right back up. All right, so down here, hopefully you see this comp one panel right here uh, and you're not on the render queue, you definitely wanna see the comp one because that's what you're working with right now. Uh, you're gonna see uh, basically like a blank box here and then your timeline and you got this little red thing here. Okay, what is all this stuff? So basically, this let's, let's talk about the timeline first. This is obviously for if you're making a film, which we're not gonna be doing just yet, or, or, or a video or anything. We're not gonna be touch, talking about videos and stuff like that yet. Uh, we'll get into animation and, and whatnot a little bit later. Um, but this is your timeline. This is how you would manipulate things. Um, you can, you know, this this is your composition bar right here. So if you know instead of having it two minutes, maybe you wanted the video to only be thirty seconds, you can just bring that in, and it would only render out to that point. Um, let's say you know you want to zoom in. Maybe you're working on something that's like you know two seconds long, and you're trying to get a little bit of a zoom in here. You can take this top bar and really zoom in there, and you'll see it starts splitting up the frames. See, there's like one frame, two frame, three frame. Um, just so you guys know. Uh, this video is currently working at 15 frames per second, which is, um, you know, you, you can't even really see 15 frames or like, like, yeah, 15 frames per second is deplorable. That's nobody watches videos like that. I don't even think maybe the old timey videos were like that or something like that back in like the 1920s or whatever. Um, but uh, typically we, we are sitting at like 30 frames per second. Some people use 24 because it's still okay. Um, and then just so you know, like, you know, you see like 60 frames per second video games or 60 frames per second um, you know, videos on YouTube and stuff like that. You could render in 60 frames per second, but you don't really see that much. I, I, I usually just stick with 30 because it's fine. It doesn't like, 
affect anything that much. But again, we're not going to be talking about video a whole lot this video. So um, just know that this is your timeline and you can manipulate the time with this guy right here. So in here, this is this is the, the most important box for you to know of. Okay, This is what's known as the layer box right here. Um, all of the layers in your scene uh, will go right here. If anyone ever asks you what After Effects is about, you say layers, okay? I told all my students this last year, if anyone ever asks you what After Effects is about, you, re you respond layers. It's all about layers, okay? And let me explain what I mean by that right now. If I go up to the top here and I click this layer bar, um, real quick, if, if it's not coming in for you, like, like if it looks like this, if it's grayed out, just click in your composition bar or your, your uh, composition tab and you'll see that it comes back. Um, go to new and then go to solid. So we're making a new solid. Uh, this is on brown before when I was making something from on caramel. Let's go with like a different color just for right now. Uh, let's go with blue just so it's a little bit easier to kind of see like differences. Um, you can make comp size or whatever, but basically you just keep it at the 1280, 720, just like our frame, and hit OK. You'll notice that now my background is blue. It's not black like it was before. Uh, it's, it's a solid blue background uh, made up of this blue solid that we see sitting in our, in our layers box right down here. You'll notice a couple attributes about it. You have this eye thing. If we toggle this on and off, it'll turn off the layer so we won't be able to see it anymore. Um, I usually don't touch these too much here. Uh, you see this arrow here. I'll touch on that in one second. This is just uh, the color of like these things right here. That's all it is. You can change that if you want. Um, this is just the, like the rank uh, where it's sitting in the layers. Um, you'll see after we have some others, it'll be like two, three, four, or five. This is just the name. Again, I don't really. You don't. You don't have to change the name of everything. It doesn't matter a whole lot unless you're in like production mode or something. Um, and you're trying to share the project with other people. For the most part, I just leave this as, as the same. The mode is just how uh, After Effects is using this layer. Uh, keep it on normal for right now, but yeah, as you can see, there's tons of options, and a lot of these do some pretty cool things, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and then this is just a parenting uh, tab, and we'll definitely get into that a little bit later as well. Now, if you go down here and you see this button right here, toggle switches and modes. Um, perhaps you actually didn't see some of the things that we were talking about a second ago. Go ahead and just toggle that, and you'll notice that this changes to this side. I'm going to go over this panel now, so you know, in case it was on the other side. I'm sorry about that for your project, but again, I usually don't touch these buttons here. I don't touch this one. Sometimes I'll touch frame um, blending, but we're not going to talk about that right now. This is a motion blur tab. Um, sometimes I'll toggle toggle that, and when we're doing something in a video, if I want. Uh, a specific layer to be motion blurred, I'll just flip that on and, and it adds a pretty nice effect for the most part. Um, this is the 3D tab, um, which it doesn't do anything as you can see right now, but uh, when we get into 3D, you'll see what it does. Alright, um, that's pretty much it for this video. We're running at 13 minutes right now and I don't want to keep you guys too long, um, so I'm going to split this up, like I said, into uh, several different tutorials. So. I'll see you in the next video, and I hope you um, are starting to get the hang of After Effects. See you then.